Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here again this wonderful Sunday morning. Early, well, about 4.25 a.m. Well, it is the moment when I get a chance to get that move and come and say what has been given for me to say. You know, there's a lot of talk going around today about Roe versus Wade and uh, a woman's rights about abortion. And I asked myself, what do I really think about abortion? Spokesman and advocate for basic human rights for all people. What do I say in regards to abortion? Well, I was raised with the idea that abortion was wrong. I was raised that God is entering a body, sending it into this world, and perhaps it's a genius. Perhaps it's just somebody who just want to help somebody. Somebody who could perhaps could give us a cure for MS or any sickness, any disease coming through this individual that's been aborted. And so we've been denied. And then as time passed and time passed and you start talking about women's rights and their ability to determine whether or not they should have an abortion, whether they should bring a child into this world. Then you get the idea about them, why get pregnant? You think about the, all of the contraceptives that have been produced that could perhaps take away this abortion process by just using. And then we say, well, then why do people not use? Because somebody wants to say, I'm not doing anything and not use and hope that nothing happens. And it always happens. And so you find somebody trying to get to that abortion. Well, what if you just said it doesn't matter? You know, you're not going to be condemned. You're not going to have to go through any changes. If you get pregnant, you got pregnant. And so we have an individual that's going to bring us something uh, that perhaps we need. Uh, well, that seems might be a good way out, but how do you get there? Well, I was thinking about this process. How do we get there? Because the truth of the matter is, women do have the right. And it seems as if other people are making decisions about uh, what women should do. And you think about this. You think about how broad this is. This is just a small example. This is just something really, really minute. But it is an example of some great things where you got people, or perhaps a group of people, who wants to control the rest of this country or a group of people who want to control the rest of the world. Somebody might say, you know, you, when you start talking about conspiracy theorists, there used to be a thing where people talked about population control and all of the various things that people would do for population control. And some people would say, well, then this virus, this mutant virus that's going around wiping people out, somebody might say that's what it's all about. And could be true, could not be true. The question is, where are we as individuals, where are we as people today in any, in any situation? In any situation. Well, we know that everybody, for some strange reason, always looks out for something that's important to them. Everybody always looks out for something that's important to them. Somebody said that uh, the Republicans had come up with an agenda that they were just going to not go along with anything that anybody else goes along with, that they were just going to represent evil. This is somebody else saying this now. I'm not saying this, probably I've said it, but I'm referring to somebody else now and saying that they're just willing and ready to burn the house down to have their way of control by force. Wow. I was thinking about that in relationship to the uh, road bases way. This is here again is a statement of control by force. And I was just thinking then, these same people who would want to, they consider this a righteous move, I'm sure they do. But would they be willing to also put the same kind of force behind assuring that not only that these babies who are saved by this particular effort. But when they come into the world, that they, but not only just the kids, but their parents who brought them into this world, 
that all of them will have access to the basic essentials for survival. Guarantee it to them. You're going to guarantee them that they can come into the world. Now, can you guarantee to them also that they will have the basic essentials for survival? Not access to compete, but guaranteed to have. You guaranteed them to live. That was not maybe. They lived because of what you, your compassion for them. Now, with that same compassion, guarantee to them that as they live, they will be guaranteed those essentials for survival, like food. They'll never have to worry about it. Throughout their lifetime, clothing, shelter. Can you, who love them so much that you're going to guarantee that they are brought into the world, can you guarantee that they will have available to them unlimited and unrestricted education? Can you guarantee to them that they have health care from the womb to the tomb? Can you guarantee to them that they themselves can have a participatory pro process in place that allows them to engage themselves in creating food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, transportation, infrastructure, anything that your imagination can bring forward and there are the minds put their hands to it. And all things that are created by the hands of men belong to men, humankind, to meet their needs, their wants, and their desires. Then this, my friends, would offer peace, prosperity and freedom, joy, and dreams fulfilled. This, my friends, is a, an expression of something that America has never tried, and I don't believe anywhere on the face of the earth, except they might have, since they say there's nothing new. And if it is nothing new, then we should return to this right away. Now, this basically means that you're not going to look for any government system to operate to bring these ends. You're not going to look for any politician to advocate for these ends until you, the people, have made the decision that this is you. This represents you. And then no politician can fool you because in this process, there is no pain, there is no suffering, there is no lying, there is no cheating, there is no stealing, there is no crime, there is no poverty, there is no violence, there is no terror, and there is no war. So any stuff like that, you know, no. So ladies and gentlemen, I ask you, this sounds pretty good to me. It sounds better than anything the Republicans are talking about to me. It sounds better than anything that Trump's and his folks are talking about. In fact, it sounds better than anything that the Democrats are talking about. But I won't even stop there. It sounds better to me than anything that they're talking about in the churches. Now, does that mean that this is the greatest? I tell you what. Whatever gives God the greatest glory, whatever is the greatest expression of love, that means satisfying and bringing joy to the, the fabric of human beings and eliminates all of dissension. That, my friend, is the greatest. It has nothing to do with any individual. It is what is truly right. And that is God. And so wherever they come from, God gets the glory. It ain't about you or me or any of us. It is about God and our commitment to be an instrument that's made by God. Ladies and gentlemen, think about that. I don't know what I was talking about. Just thought I'd get up and say something this morning. Have a good day.